Hi everybody, how you doing today? Uh, today I wanted to show you a little speaker that I happened upon uh, several years back um, that was uh, a pretty pretty shocking uh, little speaker. So uh, uh, I tell you, I was at an audio show. I'm I am an audio salesman. Um, I'm a sales manager at Extend Technologies in Ohio, um, but. I was at a show checking out all the new products, you know, seeing what we might want to put in our store, and I came across these little guys. Uh, they're called the Totem Acoustics Arrows. Um, first thing, I look at them and I laughed, like, "Wow, that is that's the slimmest, smallest woofer I've ever seen. Uh, slimmest tower um, that can't possibly produce good sound." That's the first thought that crossed my head. Um, and they, at the show, they had them hooked up to some huge Krell monoblocks, I think, at the time. Um, big, huge amplifier, and I'm like, that's, that's ridiculous. Um, but I turned the volume knob up, and I was like, wait, what, what speakers do they have hooked up? Is that, is, that, is that those? Is that coming from those? And it's, they sounded awesome. They were pretty, uh, pretty shocking. That was my biggest shock and audio and that's when I really got introduced into the totem uh, line. So uh, I'll tell you a little bit about them. Long story short, I sell totems now. Um, this is not a sales, sales pitch. I'm just here to share uh, what I think about the speakers. Um, you are welcome to stop by and hear them if you like, um, if you're in the area. Uh, but anyway, uh, this is a very slim floor standard. Women love this speaker, by the way. Wives. Uh, I'll get wives coming in. You're not putting a big speaker in our house. And they come in and they sit in front of these and listen to some Diana Krall. Uh, and they go, wow, yeah, you can put those in the house. Those are, those are beautiful. So, um, so guys, if your wife shuts down the... the uh, the speaker purchase, take a look at totems. They're all, they're all very nice and slender. They're all small, two-way designs. Uh, they do have some more complex designs, but uh, up, in the, up in the line of ways. Anyway, um, yeah, so this is the, the totem arrow tower here. Uh, we have a four and a half inch woofer. It's a very long throw woofer design. Uh, so first thing you think of when you see these is, well, that's not going to have any bass at all. That's not going to be full range. Um, well, they do. Um, everybody asks me, everybody that hears these, oh, where's the subwoofer? So there's no subwoofer. It's just right here. Like, oh, well, how many drivers are on the back? That's the next question I hear. Or, or they think there's drivers inside, like there's more of these or a subwoofer in the bottom. There's not. Just these two drivers. You've got four and a half inch woofer. And you have a 19 millimeter textile dome tweeter, uh, or three quarter inch, very small tweeter, really good dispersion characteristics. I believe they developed it actually just for this speaker model. Um, this is the cherry finish, by the way. This is uh, an upgrade finish. Um, standard finishes are black ash, which is very nice, tight grain black, or uh, ribbon mahogany, or mahogany they call it, uh, which is a reddish kind of striped wood. Uh, so the cherry is a little bit more. All right, on the back we've got uh, by wire posts or by amping posts. You can remove the jumpers. You can amp the tweeter and the woofer separately if you wanted. Certainly not necessary on a speaker like this. Or you can buy wire, uh, which has some improvement in certain applications. Um, uh, but on the back here, basically it's a ported design, base reflex design. Uh, there's a large chamber for such a small woofer because it is tuned to a pretty low frequency. Um, you get incredible bass out of these. Um, down here, this is not a second port, this is actually a mass loading chamber, uh, which uh, you can fill with like uh, kiln dried sand, uh, you can put shot in there, or um, uh, clay non-odor kitty litter will work to put some weight in the bottom. It adds to stability of the speaker. Uh, it also will dampen the bass some. It'll tighten up the bass a little bit. Uh, you don't want to overfill them, but for these they actually recommend between 10 and 20 pounds, which is quite a bit of weight. Okay, this is a 4 ohm speaker. Uh, that's uh, 
that really kind of means that you, you don't want to power them with a typical receiver. Uh, if it's going to be a receiver, it's got to be a pretty high-end model. You want good quality amplification with this. Um, so I suggest uh, separates, you know, a good solid state standalone amplifier, um, or tube amp, they'll work fine with a tube amp too. Um, the uh, totem recommends between 20 and 80 watts of power for these, but good clean current, not, not you know, 20 watts out of a Harman Kardon receiver or something. Nothing, nothing against them, it's just, uh, th this is made for a different, different class of uh, amplification. A good quality integrated work well too, uh, like a Cambridge integrated, uh, Marantz, yeah, there's a lot of them out there. Um, a lot of good ones. But, um, yeah, one thing that strikes me about these, because of their narrow profile and the drivers being so close together, they're actually overlapping, um, these image like crazy, what, what we call a holographic sound stage, you know, where you close your eyes and you can picture the image in front of you, the artist standing on stage and that kind of thing. Their dispersion characteristics are really good. Um, I'll show you another thing I did that's, that's actually pretty cool, kind of funny, uh, for the headphone guys, for my headphone watchers out there. Um, but uh, yeah, power them with something decent, um, you know, really 60 good clean watts and, and an integrated is great for them. Uh, even 40 watts of, of clean power, they're going to sound good. Okay, the only limitation on a small two-way design like this is that it is it is a small two-way design. This is not going to blow you out of the room. Uh, their maximum capability before distortion or dynamic compression is about 103 decibels. So this is not a speaker that you want to put in a 50-foot long room and listen to poison cranked up all the way and just rock out to. Not that kind of speaker. Um, it sounds good with rock, but at normal listening levels. Um, jazz, phenomenal jazz speaker, uh, which is what I listen to a lot. Um, but that's really the only limitation. Now there is a benefit to a small two-way design as well. Like I said, talking about the sound staging, uh, but also the purity of sound. Uh, we're only splitting the musical signal in one place. Uh, you know, highs and the, through the crossover, highs are going to the tweeter, lows are going to the woofer, obviously, but we're only splitting in one place. We don't have the complexity of a three or four way design splitting the audio signal two or three times. You're, you're adding distortions into the mix and a lot of complexity in the, the design. So this is a very pure sound, um, very little compromise in the way the audio gets to you. Uh, but speaking of the crossover, I actually pulled the crossover out of this thing. It is a, it is a beefy unit. Um, most companies will cheapen out on the crossover because the consumer never sees it. The, the end user doesn't see what's in there. Uh, the crossover in this thing has huge audio grade capacitors, air core inductors, uh, the internal wiring is a real high purity copper, uh, silver plated copper. It's all silver soldered. Uh, there's no push on connectors anywhere inside here. Um, and uh, the wire has Teflon insulation on it. Um, so it's, they, they put the money into the sound of this and the crossover definitely adds to the sound quality of the unit. Um, uh, the other thing is there's no, in the totem designs, there's no polyfill or, uh, you know, like pillow stuffing or foam or anything inside the cabinet. Uh, they feel it, it can break down over years and your sound's going to change. Uh, but also it can slow down the air movement inside the cabinet uh, which can slow down the bass and kind of muddy up bass. What they're using is called a borosilicate paint that was developed by NASA. It's a real real heavy uh, high mineral content uh, paint that's designed to dampen resonances in a surface. Um, and they, they paint several layers of that on the inside and it works extremely well. You have a very fast, very clean bass with these. Um, with the whole totem line actually. Um, and one other interesting point, these are veneered on the outside. You can see the, the nice cherry wood there. They're also veneered on the inside. Um, I like to say they're kind of tuned like a violin. They're, they're not built out of concrete. They're not super heavy and 
completely lifeless. Um, they uh, they sort of resonate a little bit and very nice and very sweet. It adds a nice warmth to the to the sound. So I know you guys are going to ask me about this. Uh, so I guess I'll just tell you now. This is called the Beak. Uh, it's a little aluminum pod that sits on top of the speaker, usually in the front outer corner. Um, this is actually designed on a supercomputer. The the ribbing and the taper of the cone and the chamber underneath are specific dimensions that are supposed to reduce treble glare and add to the smoothness of the, the treble. Um, and I know you're going to ask me, does it make a difference? Well, I'm going to tell you, I don't know. I really don't know. But I have to say, I've never compared. I've never compared the two because I don't want to. I don't, I really don't want to know. Um, I believe with, with everything else Totem has done, because everything they've done is, uh, is pretty awesome with their sound, I don't need to know whether this makes a difference or not. I'm just going to believe that it does. So I've never compared them. Uh, I think they look cool. It's good audio jewelry. You know, set them on top of your, your speaker. It looks pretty cool. And I'm just willing to bet that it does make a difference. They say that there is a difference. I've never done a blind test on it. I think they look cool, and uh, and uh, you know I have a pair on mine. I've actually got some totems at home. So okay, one more thing that's pretty cool for you headphone guys out there. These are like floor-standing headphones. I'll show you what I mean. <laughs>